Hello and welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. In this video, we are going to talk about money. The money you can get and want to get for your choir. The reason why I'm doing this video is currently in my country, the concert season has started and every choir I know and every choir director I know is planning it. But for a certain kind of plan to happen, you need financing. You need the money. I realize that not a lot of choirs or choir directors, if any, talk about where they get their money for the choir from. There are lots of ways to get the money for your choir season, but honestly, have you ever talked about that to someone? Have you asked someone? And if you asked someone, did that person give you an honest and thorough answer? In my experience, people don't talk about this because they don't want to reveal their secrets. I've made it one of my missions in life to be as open as I could be because for me it's not about the competition, it's about if we work together we can do better. And to be honest, in the last year that proved to be right. But I'm aware of the fact that some of you maybe think I don't need financing for my choir or we are such a small choir, we are not allowed to ask for funding. Or you are thinking, I don't have anything to spend it on. I think you are the target audience for this particular video. The first part of the video is going to be where and how to get the funding and the financing for your choir or the upcoming choir season or project. And part two is going to talk about why you should and what to spend it on. Where to get it from and how? Well, in my experience in the scene I'm working with, the main difference between choirs is this one. Is the choir under some kind of a, an institution or it's a standalone choir? Choirs who are under an institution, meaning they're working for the institution. For example, one of my choirs two of my choirs actually, sorry, uh, are university choirs. Members are students of this particular university and they fund the choir's work. If you're under an, institu if you're under an institu uh, institution in question uh, covers your venue fees or the place you're holding your rehearsals in, all you're wearing for the official performances, music sheet, and also paying the choir conductor. You have to be aware that that's a great thing to have, but anybody who has ever worked under an institution knows that there are strings attached. That choir obviously has some obligations towards the institution. It has to represent the institution. Your number one priority is their conditions. So when the institution asks you're required to perform at a certain event, you have to do it for free. Because it's not actually for free, they're funding you. And that is okay. That is something that works really well. It's very important for the institution to respect the choir, but also for the choir to respect the institution. The thing I'm going to talk about right now is the fact when you are having a bigger project and you have to ask your institution for the money, for the extra money. This is where the how to get it part comes in. You have to negotiate it. I know it's uncomfortable to ask for more money, but think of it this way. For example, you want to go to a certain competition which is not in your city. You have to travel. And when you add up all the expenses, it adds up. You don't think it's polite to be asking for that kind of money. I will be brutally honest here. First of all, if the institution is large enough to be funding a personal choir, that means they have the money for it. They have the money for your special project, just about convincing them they should invest in you. Second brutal truth is just that. You have to present it in a way that they are actually benefiting from the fact they're financing you, which was broader than just having a choir. If they fund or traveling to go to a bigger choir competition and you do really well there, they will take the credit for it. They 
would say, look, our choir is so impressive. They went to this big choir competition. They won an award. So be smart about this. When you ask for money, for a special project, for additional money, you present it like it's an investment and a benefit for them. Present it in a way they will be silly. They would be missing an opportunity to become an even better institution, which will get accolades for supporting their choir. Now, if you're a standalone choir, that is some ways better because you don't have strings attached to a certain institution but the financing is a bit harder to manage everything i will say from now on also applies to buyers that are under certain institutions but my advice would be to check whether you are allowed to ask for funding other than your institution if you're a standalone choir that means that you're working for yourself financing for your choir come externally and internally. The first thing that comes to mind are membership fees. Your choir members could pay. This is not for everyone. Actually, some people are very strongly against it. But if you're a standalone choir without any bigger support, the most logical step to take is to support each other. All the choir members are coming to the rehearsals and coming to the performances and working together. They probably want their choir to perform well. So don't be immediately against memberships. If you're going to do that, if you're going to introduce memberships to your choir members, the amount could be yearly or monthly. I strongly advise you that the amount is extremely reasonable be reasonable not just in this current moment they have to pay the monthly membership fee every month it should be sustainable it could be a symbolic amount even a symbolic fee every month covers some of the expenses even if it's just a photocopying music sheet the biggest thing about membership fees the biggest advantage they provide is some kind of a accountability for your choir members. When they pay a certain amount of money every month, they want to be there. They want to see what their money is spent on. They don't want to lose that money, so their attendance to rehearsals becomes better. Don't discount. Don't refuse immediately to think about memberships. It could benefit you. Next, we are on to paid performances. I see this a lot when you're an amateur choir, a non-professional choir, a very small choir, a very young choir. So maybe you are not brave enough to ask for your performances to be paid for, or you think you're not worthy of the fee. If a certain firm or person or event or organization is asking your choir to perform, it's logical you would want that to be paid. I'm not saying that you should ask for your very first performance to be paid a large amount of money just because you're performing. You need a little practice to perform. But if you're a practiced choir, you have to be aware that for every performance, your choir members have to show up, have to present everything they've managed to learn during the rehearsals. They have to spend their time there. The choir conductor has to be there to lead everything. You have to be presentable. You have to entertain people. So that is something that is worth to be paid for. I see this a lot because in amateur choirs and non-professional choirs, a lot of people are not musicians. They're probably on nine to five working places. They don't have it in their heads. They deserve to be paid. And I'm not talking about personally every member should be paid, but a choir should get the fee for their performance. You have to switch that opinion if you're not of it already. I'm not saying that you should always ask to be paid or refuse to perform if you're not paid because the purpose of a performance is not only to get the money for it. A choir is benefiting from the opportunity to perform. I am aware of that. For example, when you perform at a certain well-publicized venue, you are introduced to a new audience, your name is much more frequently mentioned, lots of benefits, but that doesn't mean 
that you're not deserve to be paid as a choir for your effort and for your practiced performance. So my advice would be if you get an invitation for a certain event to perform on, ask is it paid for and if it's not then decide whether the benefits you will be getting from it will be worth it. And another advice, the organization of this event first says no it's not paid. If you see that there are other performers there, you can say well we are sure that other performers are not performing for free so my main point with this is don't consider yourself to be unworthy of asking for money i'm an effort of the choir is worth it and plus if you become a choir that performs every time for free it would become even harder for you in the future to get any paid performances Next, we're on to sponsorships. Sponsorships are a tricky subject, but it's a very common thing. I'm sure you are aware of the way sponsorships work. You ask to be sponsored for a certain event or a certain project, and the sponsor gets a certain benefit. For example, they give you the money for a certain concert, and then in return, you give them a certain amount of free tickets. Don't be afraid to ask for sponsorships uh, because you send a sponsorship request to a firm. They get it all the time and plus as chances are a sponsorship money they will be giving to you is a tax deductible tax benefit. Don't be afraid to ask for the money but be aware that you have to give something back there are free tickets where the most uh, common thing is the firm to be mentioned as a sponsor during the event or the logo is someplace on the programs that you have to negotiate it and really talk it through with the potential sponsor. Grants are something to think about. If you're a standalone choir, maybe you're standing alone, but you're standing alone in a certain environment. Maybe it's a local community. Maybe it's a specific uh, genre of music you're singing. Maybe your audience is, is a specific kind of audience uh, when it comes to nationality or religion. Maybe you are one of the biggest and most important choirs in your city. The community you are in should be, could be smart enough to want to financially support you now and then I'm sure in your city there are grants to be applied for. If you're working with a choir that means that you're in the culture section. You don't have to be the most famous choir there is. In. But if you are influencing a certain amount of people that means that you're a part of the culture scene. Apply for certain grants when it comes to music, when it comes to culture in general. Okay, so these are all the ways I know how to get the financing for your choir. If there are any more, please let me know down in the comments if you wish to. Uh, I don't think we are a competition to each other, so I would be happy to learn something new because I, again, I don't live in your country probably and uh, I don't know uh, the specific situations you are in. But when it comes to why you should get the funding from an external source and what for. I really strongly think a choir as an organization is an important part of a community. Don't think of your choir as an unimportant one or not important enough. That's not the way it goes. A lot of people in your town, in your country are spending the money and to be financially supporting culture is important and you are part of that culture if you think you don't have to ask for external financing because your members are financing everything and i'm not talking about memberships I'm talking about when you're making uniforms for example they are paying for their own i don't think that's fair because if somebody is in a choir singing and you tell them, in order to be performing with the choir, you have to pay for this uniform. 
I mean, to me, it doesn't seem fair. If you're thinking, well, that's okay, I'm the choir director, it's my responsibility to finance the choir. No, it is not. And if you're always paying from your own pocket for everything, you're not taking into account how much time you're spending on this choir. Time is money. You spending time is actually money. So I'm not saying that you should ask for your time as a choir director to be paid for. You should be paid for it, but that's a topic for another day. But if you're thinking that you are this good person and it doesn't matter if you're losing money because you think of it as investing at a certain point investing money becomes losing money be aware that you don't have to lose money you should not be losing your money and finally what to use that money for other than bigger projects like organizing a concert uh, going to a competition, going traveling to a competition or a certain event. There are lots of other stuff which add up as time goes by. Huh, a Casablanca reference. For example, I mentioned that copying the music sheet, maps you're holding your sheet in, the place you're holding your rehearsals in. Do you have to rent it? Do you have to pay for it? the accountant to get your finances in order when you are organizing a concert there are lots of stuff the flowers you will be giving to people who were performing as guests uh, publicity you're paying for the facebook ads the marketing the pr you will be doing for the concert copyright fees you are paying for the accompanist's time and rehearsals and finally, your choir conductors uh, deserves to be paid, especially if you're having someone who is a professional. Their time costs money and it doesn't have to be a lot, but it's something to think about. Think of it this way. If you're having a professional choir conductor working with you, chances are he or she already has a few other choirs and if every other choir is paying that person to be there and you are not you are the first one to go when the schedule gets too tight for that person when your choir gets funding and gets its finances in order it becomes stronger Okay, so that is it. I really hope this video was helpful to you. If you wish to see more from Inquire to Choir, you can watch all of the other videos here. There are a lot of them already. And you can subscribe. I don't have a schedule because I work full time. So I don't know when the next video will be here. But I'm trying to be here at least once a month. And that would be it. Thank you for watching. Conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!